This short video is going to go over the poem Lost or Found World, which was written in the 70s by a South African poet. I'm going to start by reading the poem. Skies of truth are now scenes at the mercy of my curtain eyes. I wink often, more often, to draw the curtains, to cut and forget the skies. The sea of identity is tears, a too salty expression, bleeding my blue veins, that's my pen, on the loose sand that shall sip and the wind shall help cover it from the needy arteries. Mountains of hope are flowers, Passes attracting cars like bees for the precious modern honey that is money. This modern madness snaps flowers from their stems, leaves dry, dead bodies walking up the street. Old wishes as present deeds, bright with blinding for old, dark with wonder for the new. That's where we are, lost or found world. So the poem was written in the 70s by a black South African poet, and so we're invited to consider it through that lens, but it does not speak specifically about South Africa. And so we're also uh, probably invited to see it through a contemporary lens. It's the kind of poem um, that we can still identify with, especially the line, this modern madness and an obsession with money. So beginning with the first stanza, Skies of truth are now scenes at the mercy of my curtain eyes. I wink often more often to draw the curtains to cut and forget the skies. So in this, in this stanza, he uses some quite clever imagery. So if we run over Swift just briefly, when analysing a poem, we would consider Swift, which stands for structure, word choice, imagery, figures of speech, and tone or theme. And when we start to look at the imagery in this poem and link it to the figures of speech, we see just how clever the constructions are. Skies of truth are now scenes. So the skies of truth, we, we feel when we look up at the sky, we, we feel quite overwhelmed often by the wide expanse. So um, that there's a sense that there's so much um, going on in the world that it can be a bit overwhelming and um, he's able to to shut himself off to close those curtains on his eyes um, and he finds himself winking often more often to draw the curtains to cut and forget the skies so the metaphors skies of truth and curtain eyes are very clever um, cleverly rendered in the stanza because the eyes are curtains that he can close when the skies of truth become more than he can bear. He finds he winks more often to forget, suggesting times are hard and the truth is painful. In the second stanza, um, the imagery is um, linked to, to the sea, to identity and to, um, to pens bleeding his poems. And... Um, Again, we've got this natural um, feature that, that we think of as expansive and, um, and quite large, if you think about the sea. Um, and he links it to identity. So the sea of identity is tears. A too salty expression, bleeding my blue veins, that's my pen. On the loose sand that shall sip and the wind shall help cover it from the needy arteries. So what I find quite clever about this stanza is the um, salty ideas that he links through the imagery. So there's the sea, the tears, and, um, and then there's blood as well, um, which I think is quite clever. Um, and I also think that the sound devices in, the, in this stanza um, are quite clever as well, um, particularly the sibilance. So the sea of identity is tears, a too salty expression. Um, and then we've got the plos of bees, bleeding my blue veins, that's my pen. Um, so that emphasizes that image of, of um, a, a feeling that the poet is actually bleeding through his pen, his emotions as he um, writes them on, on the page, which he compares to the sand. Um, he compares with bleeding. Um, so that just shows how deeply he feels and how his poetry can be viewed as, as uh, protest. 
um, on the loose sand, the page that shall sip. And then you've got this clever um, sipping sound, the sibilant that shall sip and the wind shall help cover it. So the loose sand that shall sip. Um, and if you take a look at the image at the bottom, you can see a picture of the sand sipping in the blood. So looking more closely, there are many identities. A sea of people, which he links to crying and tears. Is he talking about his identity as a black man during apartheid? He then cleverly links salty tears to blood bleeding his veins, his words out of his pen, which the sand sips and the wind covers. He tries to express himself, but society covers it up. Is it society? Is it, the, um, is it censorship? Note the sibilance which reinforces the sipping into the sand. Um, and then I've asked that question, could he be referring to censorship? And I think that it's um, quite likely. Moving on to the third stanza, the imagery in the stanza, stanza is quite beautiful and the structure becomes quite interesting here. So um, when we look at structure, we're looking at punctuation and we're looking at line length um, and, and various other things. And, um, and if there's rhyme, um, in this poem, there's quite a lot going on in the stanza. Mountains of hope are flowers, passes attracting cars like bees. For the precious modern honey, that is money. This modern madness snaps flowers from their stems, leaves dry, dead bodies walking up the street. Okay, so as I've said, there's quite a lot going on. If we look at the metaphor, we've got mountains of hope being compared to flowers and the passes um, attracting cars like bees. So um, the bees are cars and the honey is money. Um, and... There's a lot going on with regard to sound again. Um, the passes attracting cars like bees um, is onomatopoeic. We can hear the bees and we can hear the cars through the, the S sound. And um, we can also um, hear a mutter through the M repetition, money, modern, madness. Um, and, and he repeats the word modern, which, which is worth noting as well. Um, and then what is most interesting for me in this stanza is the length of the line that splits the stanza in two. Um, that is money, uh, which he ends with an emphatic full stop. So um, looking at that then, um, he, he, he feels he has identified uh, what creates this modern madness that he speaks of that leaves um, dry, dead bodies walking up the street, which is quite a plosive um, sound and the dry dead bodies right so looking more deeply there is hope because um, he refers to mountains of hope but society's obsession with money or honey snaps the flowers the good things linked with hope cause the mountains mountains um, of hope um, and the, this leaves the dry dead bodies which again I think is quite clever you've got this plosive sound, the dry dead bodies and the dry flowers through the imagery, the flowers who, the flowers which have been snapped. Um, note the interesting punctuation and shorter lines when he emphasizes money and the M alliteration like a mutter, money, modern madness. And the S repetition, um, as we've already mentioned, is onomatopoeic um, within the words passes, cars and bees, like a buzzing. And then, um, yeah, note the assonance as well. Um, so it's a very busy stanza, just like a busy bee. All right, the final stanza is very ambiguous, um, but we note the juxtaposition of ideas. So you've got the idea of blindness and dark um, being just juxtaposed with um, the new and the bright. Um, okay, so if we, we read it, old wishes is present deeds, bright with blinding for old dark with wonder for the new. That's where we are, lost or found world. So bright with blinding for old, dark with wonder for the new. Um, bright and blinding, bright um, links somewhat to the, to the idea of wonder and newness and blinding to the darkness. Um, the idea, they, they tie in also, if you, if you think about it, with the, with the ideas of lost or found. So, are people able to do what was once only wished for, or has the revolution only just begun? It depends on whether you're using a contemporary lens or not. 
Um, but as I've said, I, I feel like this poem has universal relevance because he doesn't specifically um, mention South Africa. And I think it crosses time periods too because um, we, we all face um, social problems. Bright with blinding for old is plosive again, emphasizing the hope, which is bright, and, and remember the mountains of hope, but feeling overwhelmed, the blinding by the task and not being able to see a way forward, which links again with the idea of dark. Um, so dark and wonder are contrasted. Um, so he's not letting go of the idea of hope, but he, but he does seem to suggest that it is dark ahead. It's hard to see. Um, and the exclamation mark helps the reader to feel the writer's frustration about the future. So the poem could apply to the situation in the 70s in apartheid South Africa, the frustration the poet felt about being heard during apartheid, uh, bleeding through his pen and the wind covering it up in the sand, sucking it in. Um, we aren't told that it is about South Africa, so a broad interpretation is certainly possible. Um, also, is the world lost or found? It's very ambiguous. The poem does not answer the question it poses. Um, are we lost? Um, are we found? But it certainly does seem to suggest that there is hope.